Hey everybody, Brian here from quantlabs.net. Now it's been a while since I've talked about MathWorks MATLAB. Uh, the new release came out uh, as of today on September 14th. Release 2016B has quite a lot of new modern features with uh, MATLAB. Now these are the three major areas that they've um, upgraded. All three of them I think are really important. Uh, I've been working with Python now 2.7 uh, since December, so about maybe uh, pretty safe to say about close to a year of software development in um, Python, and on top of that, I've added probably another nine months to ten months of R. Um, when you factor in MATLAB, I've got two three years there, and I've always liked MATLAB, and I'm going to show you some of the features of MATLAB, I think that'll be very useful for people. Now, one of the nice things about where I'm going over the next uh, couple of months is I'm getting out of education in software development and platform development. Uh, I just think it's so saturated now that I just wanna focus on charts and forecasting the markets and actually um, all the areas of trading for traders, regardless of what technology I choose. But I think over time, I'll be using the best of, of each of the major um, development platforms, or, or I call them research or prototyping platforms, be it Python, be it uh, R or MATLAB. But the nice thing about MATLAB, it encompasses all of the prototyping capabilities, and you can also develop some pretty slick workflows from it. But the other cool thing is you can easily integrate it into all the major important languages <clears throat> like C++, Java, and uh, Python even, and if you really had to, .NET. <laughs> but you will probably know my opinion on the new Windows 10. Okay, so let's start talking about um, the data, which is this. Now, there's not much, I mean, each language in both uh, R and Python are really wonky. I, I find them, the one thing I don't like about R is that the transitioning of different types of data have it fit one package over another. It's just, it's really um, hectic to work with. Maybe they've sort of done some updates in their um, more recent versions of like, let's say an R3. But I found it really cumbersome and really kludgy to uh, just work with it. And the data handling, um, well, the nice thing about Python is that with Python, it's really good at minimizing the amount of uh, packages that you want. Obviously, you're just going to use the big three, and then probably, I don't know if you ever decide to do machine learning. There's probably a good machine learning out there, I think Sci Scilab or something like that. But anyways, uh, the major three packages you'll end up using are Pandas, uh, Matplotlib, and the other one is NumPy. So, all those are cool, um, and I haven't had any real, real issues with it, but the one thing I don't like about Python is just the data handling again. Um, but it's much easier to work with uh, than R, without a doubt. Um, the charting is quite good. But at the end of the day, uh, MATLAB has its issues as well. The dates are not fun, the data types are not easy, but I think in this new version, they are trying to make it a lot easier. Um, the data, the data handling has, has been one of its big weakness here, but I think um, there is a, uh, uh, an example I could show you uh, on how to handle that. So again, um, yeah, this is what I was wanting to show you, the timetable data container. This will make life so much easier um, with different components, uh, I'm gonna assume. Um, but again, I'm just assuming here, but it's obviously being created because they know it's a weakness. Uh, the other cool thing about uh, MATLAB is the ability to um, parallelize very easily. You don't have to be uh, a rocket scientist to figure out to get um, a, a, uh, a card from, let's say, NVIDIA that is going to be compatible with the version to parallelize. It's very easy. Um, it's, it's so easy. I think even a, a two-year-old could do it. Um, and it's pretty cool, and you can do a MATLAB pool, and voila, um, do it in like three lines. And that's in any algorithm, it's very cool. Big data algorithms, I have no idea, um, but it looks like, uh, we'll assume it's this stuff, um, very cool, yay. 
Uh, I'm kind of brushing over all this because I'm sure it's going to be important uh, for me, but I'm going to be honest with you. Um, the documentation in MATLAB is, 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 is none other. I mean, I will give Microsoft its kudos as the documentation is very slick. Obviously, coming from the world of Python R, it's good, uh, but, but I think MATLAB and Microsoft leave uh, those other open source platforms in the dust when it comes to, so if you're trying to learn your math, trying to learn your advanced trading, um, in this, from an industry perspective, learning it off of MATLAB is definitely a good way to go. Um, so that's all cool. Now, that's just a very general overview of the data capabilities in 2016B. The other big one is obviously machine learning because that's becoming huge, okay? So again, I know right out the get-go that to work with MATLAB, it's so much easier because it shields you from the complexities of um, R and Python, even though they're really good, but just MATLAB is much easier and better at it. It's more slick. Um, and they have lots of good examples to work with, and the MATLAB uh, file central is, 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 is stellar as well. So again, big data algorithms, I'm going to assume that. Bayesian optimization, feature selection. I, I'm going to just sit here and play dumb because I, I really don't know. Here's the powerful thing about it, is because I'm choosing C for my uh, systems, I now have a way to take this code from any of these and convert them into C um, with a MATLAB code. It doesn't stop there. I'm going to show you some other cool thing that you can do with MATLAB that will enhance the capabilities of MATLAB because you can generate that code into C from your MATLAB scripts and it's, it's, it's just awesome. Classification learner, I have no idea. Machine learning performance, again, I, I can't I can't comment on any of this. Uh, but I know Simulink. Now, if you haven't seen Simulink, in, it's an amazing tool. Um, what you can do is you can visually design like in here with your different blocks um, with more powerful options now getting easier as well uh, to visually generate your your blocks I think they're they're really leveraging the power of simulating but at the same time making it easier for numbnuts like myself uh, that really because it's really was originally designed for electronics and engineering but I think they realize the value of Simulink, that there's nothing else out there that comes close. So they're leveraging the base of it on top of making it easier and bringing out some really, really cool uh, features. So I haven't really looked at this lately, but the one thing I really like about when you generate Simulink models is you can generate C, C++ code from them on top of uh, if you wanted to ever deploy it onto uh, an ultra lower latency piece of hardware like an FPGA board um, or an ASIC board, you can do that through Simulink. Very expensive, but it can be done. And when you factor in to, to, get to hire coders to naturally uh, do the hand coding of your model from whatever your Python R when you prototype it, and you want to uh, produce... C or C++ code is very complicated to do. And even though it is very expensive, it's a one-time fee, and you're saving yourself tons of money in not needing to, um, to uh, hire coders to do that, which can get probably a lot more expensive over the long run. Uh, so the other cool thing here is um, Raspberry Pi. Now, this is a cool little platform. Um, I've got people... Uh, traders that are building out um, using Pies, Raspberry Pies, embedding Redis into these things because that's C as well. And I've had online arguments with these dummies from Couchbase and all these other proprietary freemium NoSQL database solutions, and they just don't know what the hell they're talking about. I'll give an example if you got Redis, which is NoSQL in memory. Um, 
true open source in C, you can embed it into other things. Like uh, Redis Labs did where they embedded it with the collaboration of Intel into flash memory. Well, they were able to get processes of up to 4 million transactions per, uh, per second. Nothing comes close to that. Uh, not Oracle, not SQL Server, nothing. These are high-end, expensive databases. But because now you, you are able to embed your Redis into these Raspberry Pis, you can now merge the, um, I'll assume, Simulink models in C and get them to talk to each other maybe. I don't know, these, these are just wild ideas I'm coming up with, so you can do some really cool stuff. Um, so not only that, but things do get more sophisticated. I can't really comment on a lot of these, um, but I do know there were um, something in here I, I can't remember, but I, I, I really want to leverage the power of Simulink in my lower level, um, lower level models or functions as I get more advanced. Okay, so there's that. Um, okay, so we've got both of those major pieces covered off. Okay, now what I do know I can talk about is this uh, section here, what's new in the MATLAB 2016B. Um, we've talked about this timetable data container, which I think is very valuable. Uh, the live editor, okay, um, I think uh, George from Facebook, my Facebook group, my meetup group, has talked about the new Jupyter, which is really the IPython, uh, which is really cool and it's free, it's open source. But this live editor blows that out even more. Uh, yeah, it does cost, but for me, time is money. And uh, this this is a really cool editor, so I can bang out my own code, turn it in reports, and then send them off to wherever. The other cool thing I like about App Designer, and I, I can say this from my experience so far with Python, is there has been a really honest effort to generate tools to um, develop front ends using Python in a rapid application um, development tool or RAD. Um, the best example that I've seen that probably will work and is true open source is WX widgets. And there, I've seen util utilities that can enable you to generate C code and uh, Python code from it, which is really cool because there is a package for WX widgets in Python. But again, um, when the library gets updated with WX widgets, all those other tools probably will get left behind. I mean, it's just open source how it works. So there's this thing called App Designer. You can then rapidly develop your applications in MATLAB and or use another tool called Guide and that enables you to rapidly generate front ends, uh, charting using your own code within the MATLAB, M scripting within itself, the app guide, and um, obviously the app designer will generate the MATLAB M script code for you. Um, and the cool, cool thing about it is that from within MATLAB, you're able to call um, Python scripts, you're able to call other um, Java components through jar files, Java archive files. So you could do all that within um, these tools and then have those tools generate where you can have them run on self-contained, we'll call them executables or binaries within Linux or even OS X or uh, Mac OS, I guess now. And then that's 100% cross-platform with no issues at all. As long as you keep it within Java and or Python, you're all good to go. So that's very, 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 very powerful. Uh, the graphics have got more enhanced and, and of all the tools that I've seen in languages, I've seen some amazing um, visualization tools from all over the world, all over the technologies, but my favorite still is probably .NET. Um, MATLAB's not too bad. I haven't seen a lot of the more enhanced versions of this, obviously, let's say 2016B, but we'll see. And then, of course, the data importing, exporting is much better. Um, I, I, you can transfer in, in Excel some really cool, really cool stuff. 
Um, I can't really comment on the functions that are hardware support. So, you know, for mobile phones, um, performance looks like it's getting better. Now, this is really, really, really cool. Okay, let me just take you to this. The MATLAB Engine API for Java. Now, it's using the support of GDK 7. Um, there's different ways to interface the MATLAB engine or objects from the MATLAB workspace and then have your Java uh, components be able to call them or vice versa. Um, so this is just one better uh, example. When you take your MATLAB prototype model, turn it into a model, you, you can then have the two connected using Java, but it doesn't stop there. Because they now enhance it with Java, but check it out. You can do the same thing uh, with with MATLAB, or sorry, with Python. Okay, um, so you can have Python call uh, your MATLAB components through the MATLAB engine API, I guess, for Python. Um, I'm not going to get into that, uh, but uh, I find that very cool. But where it even gets more exciting is using this option here, this C++ matrix li uh, library. Okay, um, so there's some capabilities through that. On top of, if you don't know, uh, there's also the MATLAB production server, which is a very expensive option. But you can do it through through HTTP as well. Um, so and it's very quick. Apparently, uh, there's there's some big time capabilities there. So these are some of the new features in 2016B for traders. Uh, from my perspective, um, the, the, these these fun new function this new functionality really blows the doors off of where uh, MATLAB, sorry, where Python and R are at. Not saying that Python and R are are bad. They're actually really good for there's good and bad on each language. But the nice thing about MATLAB is it can tie it all together outside of the exception of R. But um, but you can leverage the power of MATLAB and build out new ways to build up models and algorithms and then be able to turn the, those same scripts around and be able to um, merge them into production code, Java, C, C++. Um, and that's the beauty of it. And, um, you know, when you throw in the capabilities of that MATLAB production server I talked about and Simulink, that's another set of new worlds that you can definitely explore. So I just want to show that to you. But the nice thing of me getting out of the platform and I just focus on trading charts and, and analysis and all that good stuff. Um, I don't have to justify the reasons why I like using MATLAB. I don't, you know, I do it and, and all I'm generating and all you should really care about are the charts. And that's it. As a trader, not as a technical person. So that's all cool, but the nice thing is now we can easily move into machine learning the right way instead of guessing in the, from the world of R or MATLAB what works and what doesn't work. Because if, as I've said before, if, if, if it's good for MATLAB, it's got to be good. And that's the philosophy I kind of follow. So hopefully I'll help you out in this long blabbing video. I'll put up some links on my blog um, with what these I'm showing. I just thought I'd put this video together to let you know what I think of it and the importance of it. All right, talk to you later.